لا, success doesn't just come just like that. There are some efforts that had to be made. So what are these efforts? Let's look forward inshaAllah. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّهَا The one who engaged in purifying it thoroughly has already attained success. What is it in purifying it? It is the nafs that's being talked about previously. When Allah says, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا So the one engaged in purifying it and cleansing it has already in, uh, attained success. The activity of cleansing oneself, Allah calls it success. Not the one who has pure nafs. That may never happen. You, may, you and I may be engaged in the activity of trying to purify ourselves our entire lives. But we'll never get a fully pure nafs. But the one sincerely engaged in this activity, Allah calls that activity itself success. He calls that activity itself success. Then another nuance in this ayah that is a comparison between an ayah we saw before, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى Translation for that one would have been the one purifying himself would have, or, or the one who cleanses, cleanses himself has already attained success. And this is a very similar t- translation. Zakkaha. So the it, the nafs is mentioned as an entity outside of yourself. It is not mentioned as you, it is mentioned something almost as though it is outside of you. And you have to think of your nafs separately from yourself. And this is a, it's a subtle reality that is alluded to in a number of places in the Qur'an. For example, فَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى The one who feared standing before their Lord and forbade the nafs from desires. Allah doesn't say, وَنَهَا نَفْسَهُ عَنِ الْهَوَى He forbade his nafs from desires. He said, forbade the nafs. As though it is not even a part of you. So when it, came, when it comes to the corruption of the nafs, you take it as an enemy inside of you that you have to fight. So it's almost you've separated yourself from this nafs. SubhanAllah, it's a profound, profound statement that is made. The word zakka or tazkiya means to cleanse or purify. And obviously you don't clean something that's already clean. You clean something that is dirty. So the implication here is the human being realizes when Allah gave him a clear understanding and an inspiration to, rec- to recognize fujuraha wa taqwaha, right, the rebellion of it and the means to protect it, the human being realizes they haven't been entirely clean their whole life. So they have to engage in the act of cleansing themselves. So this concern with self-purification, this concern of becoming a better human being, a cleaner human being, to cleanse your nafs from filth, and these filth, these are, these are baltina, in other words, they're hidden problems. Maybe your problem is anger, maybe your problem is jealousy, maybe your problem is lying, maybe your problem is cheating, maybe your problem is ghafla, you're obsessed with entertainment, maybe it's shamelessness, you don't guard your eyes. Maybe it's your tongue, you don't, you don't hold your tongue, you just say whatever comes in your mouth. These are all means by which your nafs gets dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. And the person now, this, the one who's attained success is the one who's engaged in the act of cleansing it. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّى The one who engaged in this act has already attained true success. May Allah make us of them.